Okay, hi everybody. My name is uh, Dave. I'm better known as the Train Man. And um, I make videos regarding or about live steam locomotives. You can see my channel. I have about 275 videos up there. And uh, I do mostly ex explanation of how to build the steam locomotives, how to run them. I go to some train meets and show what other people have done, do some interviews, and so on. Well, recently I got interested in um, building ship models. Always had an interest in ship models, but I'm, uh, I just got recently got interested in ship models. And Trumpeter has made these large models on one and two hundred scale, and that kind of appeals to me. A little bit bigger, easier to work on. I wish it was one uh, one hundred size would be better. But <laughs> you'd have a be a hundred inches long. Uh, okay, well I built this model bench here. It's uh, basically from the Home Depot two countertop with a forty-five here, and I, I've got it on angle brackets. I made that shelf up. This seems to be the layout that most of the model people do, and uh, I did the same thing. Now I have a uh, over here. I'm using it was called a HCX nine twenty, which is a uh, Panasonic camera. And over here, I have this GoPro, which I bought a while ago, and I'm not sure if I like it. I would have been better off buying another HCX 920. But I got it, and I'm going to try to use it. I've been dealing with it for a couple of days now. They seem to want to make you use the, um, the cell phone. I'm using it as a monitor. I have another monitor up here that I could see. And uh, we're going to try to do some... Uh, some uh, videos uh, with some, I'm not going to do unboxing that is like overused I don't have any any interest in that. I'm not going to do anything on how I build a model there's hundreds of people who have done to Bismarck and other ships that's not what my goal is. My goal is to make videos regarding different tools that I use to make it easier to build some of these models. They're pretty tough to do. Now I watch three different channels I watch Nigel model bench, not all the time, because he does a lot of other models and ships, and he gets into the design of the hull and all of that, which is okay, but I'm not that particular about it. And also, uh, I watch um, Steve from the model shed. He's somewhere in England, and believe me, that guy is a master. He makes it look so easy. It's not that easy to do. Believe me, it's not. And then I watch, like religion, Ron Calverly up there in Winnipeg. And I'm making this video, especially for you, Ron. I got a lot of admiration for you. We're about the same age. I'm 73, going on 74. And you're about that age. And uh, I got mostly interested in doing this, or get the incentive to do it, after I saw your videos. And uh, I see you have a lot of trouble, and you kind of like, woo. Stay away from the photo edge. Now, I bought, because Steve bought it, the Pontus Advanced Set. Now, let me tell you, you know how they say on, on, um, on some models, they'll say, uh, from ages 12 and up. Well, what they should say on that is, from ages 12 to 60. <laughs> After that, forget it. Because believe me, I watch Ron, he gets a little nervous, and of course he's trying to use the camera too, and it's a little tough, he's working around the camera, so he can't really see it. it, it, it you, you know, you got to understand some of you people out there that these videos are not that easy to make. It takes a lot of time, and I did notice, Ron, that it looks like you're using uh, Power Director, which I use the same thing. It's a good program, and uh, Sony Vega, lots of money, and the other ones. That one's like fifty, sixty dollars. You get a beautiful program. I've been using it for a long time, and it works very well. But anyway, the purpose of this video is to do some photo etching. And when I first got into it, the photo etch, everybody glues it with the CA glue, which I have. I have CA glue. It's right over here. I got all my glues here. You know, this is the CA glue, and I put it on this little thing over here. Now, one thing I do use, Ron, and I noticed that Steve uses a toothpick to put the CA on. And I think it's a little finer than the thing that you use. 
and I, and I don't mean to be critic, critic, a critic here or criticizing your work. I really don't. I watched your video tonight on picking that little platform with the two little pieces coming out, and you did a really nice job on that. And I thought to myself, those three gussets that were around there, well, there's a better way to do that. And I would have soldered it because my feeling on a CA is after a while it's brittle and after a while it falls off or vibration, whatever, I think it will fall off after. Uh, I, I hope that this model that I build and other models that I plan to build will continue on through my children. And, and then the next kid generation, if they want to throw them away, who cares? I'll be dead anyhow. I don't care. But anyway, how we're going to do it is we're going to use this little gem over here that I got. Right here, you can see it. In the, right here. You see, oh, yep, you can see it's right here. That is what's called a resistance solder gun. And if you look at this right here, uh, you see it's a, it's a set of tweezers. Okay, it's a set of tweezers. Now... When you put this photo wedge together, you're using tweezers. I got the same tweezers as you and Steve have. Same ones. Okay, tweezers. You got the flat ones I use. Okay, and now you're holding that with the tweezers. You're trying to hold the other thing. And then you're trying to put the glue on. Well, you weren't born with three or four hands. You only got two. Some people don't even have that, unfortunately. Um, but this is... The, is all three things in one. It's the uh, tweezers, it's the solder gun, and it's the, uh, it's the way to hold it, a clamp to hold it. Okay, now the nice part about this is there's a foot pedal down here underneath the bench here, and I turn it on, you, can, you got it adjustable, you hit the button there and a little, little, little red light comes on, and then that's when it's working. But these two points here have to be touching. Okay? I was saying, I don't like the use of CA to, to, to glue this photo etch together. It seems to me that after a while it will crack and fall apart. I always felt that solder was the way to go, and the reason is that when they work on these little models of HO trains and O gauge trains, a little bigger, they're all brass and they're all soldered together with one of these. And this is called what's called a resistance solder gun. All right. And you have control over it here. Now, I, I do have the other one, the Halco. This is a very good soldering gun. It's controllable, uh, but you can't turn it off and on. It's either hot or cold, and that's it. This one is not. This is hot or cold. Now, when I step on the button over here, and these two things are together, you see that spark there? Might, might, you might see it. I don't know. Uh, that is then working. So now you have the resistance is right local. It's local. So those three little gussets that you were working on tonight, Ron, you can put all three of those. Now, when it came to the railing that you're going to do around that little platform, you can put that railing on, tack it all on, and then if you want to put a little CA on it, you can just to reinforce it. But uh, basically, if you solder it, it's going to be there for a long while. All right, so now, another thing I'm using is this stuff. Right, and what this is, is right here, you can get this off of Amazon. This is solder, paste, and solder. And another, again, another toothpick deal. And you put the toothpick, and I do have the other stuff too. I don't use that too much. Okay, now, I'm going to do the... Uh, radar screens. Now these things are not easy to do. I've done a bunch of them. I did the Pontus ones. Here's the Pontus ones here. Here's the Pontus ones. They're all soldered. All soldered. Here's another one. It's soldered. Okay. And I have, I have the one from the... Oh no, these are not the Pontus. These are the... These are the... Um, Trumpeter. This is the Pontus one. Much more finer, much harder to do. So, I'm probably going to use the the uh, the Trumpeter ones. Now, the thing I want to say about that is, next time around, if I do the hood, I have the Bism um, 
my Bismarck's there. I have the Arizona 2 to do. I'm going to do that. I had that for several years, and I have um, the AK set for that with the deck and everything. I have the deck for this one also. But um, I am going to use what's in the kit plus the any kind of enhancements there, but I'm not going to go through all of this uh, stuff. The reason being is 99.99999 people that look at my model don't even know the damn difference. They don't know what it is. They don't even know what the ship Prismark is, half of them. They never heard of it. Some people have. They never heard of the hood. They might have known the Arizona. But it, it's good enough. I'm not making a museum quality pr part here. I'm going to use it for um, it's just display in my home. And it doesn't need to be perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now that little, that noise you hear in the background is thy nut cat. Cinder, Cinder, where are you? Cinder, come here. Come over here. He's coming. He listens. You know, come over here. Come over here. Come on. See the people. Come on. Come on. He's over there looking at you. Anyway, he'll come out. All right, so now I'm going to. I, I see better without glasses. I'm going to do this piece here. Now, here's what I want to tell you. Ron, this is for you. A little while ago, a little while ago, you had somebody give you those, or you bought them or whatever, the cupcake things. Well, they're for making cupcakes, Ron. You can't solder with those things. You see what happened? It melted on you. This is what you want, right here. Six, seven dollars off of Amazon. This is good for 900 degrees. These are used for electronics, and they work fine. This is what I use. Okay, you might want to get one. Okay, now I got the, the resistance solder ready to go. I'm going to bend this up. I'm going to bend this up using, and I, and I bought all the benders, too. I got two benders. I went out full blast. I bought, bought everything. I got two benders. I got the little one here. You know, the little one. And that works fine. I got a great big one also. So let's see here what we're going to do. We're going to bend this up. And you got to, like like Steve says, you got to bend it. Like you got to figure out how you're going to bend it before you actually bend it. There's a right and a wrong way on us too. And let me tell you something. When you're old like me and Ron, this is very difficult to do. Now, my, my resistance solder, I got a solder gun, I got to tell you, is $400, $450 to be exact. And then I have two different heads. I'll show you the difference. I have one over here. This is the one I bought first. It's a, uh, I always keep putting my glasses on. Uh, it, this one's a little finer, but the problem is there's no guide on these. No guide, where the other one has a guide, but I, I, I probably will use those. I, these heads are $500, uh, $150 each. This one's a little bit bigger, and it has a guide in the middle here. So it can't, it does it a little bit. Okay, so now here we go. Here we go. Put a little bit of this here, Gizmachi on here. I gotta straighten it out a little bit more. But once you solder it, you know. Very gently, like working on a bomb. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of criticism about this, but I don't care. Get criticism, well, where's your video, you know? Ron, you know what I'm talking about, man. And so you do too, Stephen and Nigel. Both, all of you know what it takes to do this. And so all you got to do is put a little tiny bit on there. Now watch this here. Get my foot on there. Make sure I'm on the pedal. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do this on camera. I'm holding that. It's not going to get that hot. Hold on. Hold on. Adjust. 
trust them. A bit more. You don't need to put any flux. This flux is built in there. Okay, here we go. Now you hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it till it settles, and there it is. Here's the joint. I don't know how good you can see that, but we'll do the next one. Here's the next one. This is the way to go, my friends. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The, the, my foot's off the pedal now, so there's no juice going through it. And it soldered it. See? No problem. Okay, cameras are still on. There we go again. When you see it smoking, so you know it's working. I got my foot off there now. And sometimes it sticks. And you have to clean it off a little bit. And sometimes you gotta heat them up. Sometimes you can put them in the, so the solder flux and clean them. Okay. One more joint. One more joint. Let's see which one it is. This one right here. Oh boy, I tell you what, like I said, after 65 years old, you work on this stuff. You gotta, when you're done, you gotta take a drink because, man, you believe me. Here it is. Very little solder. It's all done. Now you can straighten it up a little bit. Get it all straight. Now I gotta put the back piece. I'll put it right down there like that. Okay, well, that's my take on it. You can take it, leave it, criticize me. I don't care. I'm gonna continue doing it the way I think it should be done. And uh, check out my other channels, you'll see what kind of craftsman I do, I do what kind of craft, crafts I, I make, and um, building these locomotives from scratch, they're all made out of metal, I designed it for the regional plans, I then uh, uh, make patterns, wooden patterns, take them to a foundry, and uh, I have made my own castings too, but it's better to have them do it, and they're not that expensive, a wheel about that big is probably about 20 bucks. Okay, my cost. I, I char charge about 50 for it if I sell, I sell stuff. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, that's it for now. I hope I got everything captured here. As a, this is the fourth video that I made for this here. So, Ron, appreciate your work. I wish you were a little closer to me. I'd come and visit you and have coffee with you. And we'd have a lot of interesting things to talk about because we were on the same kind of a plane. We are on the same... I do woodworking, I do a lot of metal work, that's what I'm trained as, I'm trained as a machinist, I've worked for a long time as a machinist, and I have a complete machine shop, as you'll see if you watch some of my videos, Train Man 4602, and if you want to see a, a, a video in particular, Steaming Up, S-T-E-A-M-I-N Up, look at that video, okay, well thanks very much for taking the time to watch my video, Subscribe and uh, ring the bell notification. You'll you'll get a next time I make a video, you'll see it. Like I said, I'm not going to make a video how I put this part on, how I put that part on. I'm only going to talk about different tools that I use and some of the other stuff. Okay, thanks again for watching my videos, and we'll see you again on the next video.